The shooting in Buffalo, New York on Saturday killed 10 people and officials are investigating the massacre as a hate crime. Meanwhile, an effort to expand Mississippi's hate crime law in this year's legislative session failed. This morning, we have a live interview for you with State Representative Otis Anthony of Indianola. He co-authored the bill to expand Mississippi's hate crime law. Good morning, Representative Anthony. Thank you so much for meeting with us. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Well, first off, I want to ask, do you think that this mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, is further evidence that Mississippi might need to expand its hate crimes law? What do you think? Uh, first, we wanted to give our condolences to those families Absolutely. Uh, who, who, who were lost, uh, the lives that were have been affected. Uh, I think not only the state of Mississippi, but, but all states uh, in this nation uh, should be looking at enhancing legislation to, uh, for those who want to commit such egregious acts as this, I think there should be some enhanced penalties uh, that should follow uh, their crimes. And I, I think the state of Mississippi has has done a great job with the bill that, that we co-authored there. I think more work should be done, uh, not only here, but, but across this nation. Now, you touched on this a little bit, but uh, do you think that when these these penalties, if they expand, do you think that it should also include people with disabilities, certain sexual orientations, or even gender identities? Yes, I think that that, that all of these uh, uh, vulnerable uh, groups that you just mentioned, uh, it, this law should should affect uh, uh, all those affected by them. Because when you look at across this nation, you see acts of violence being committed. Uh, on people with disability, on people with different religious views, on, on those who, who skin color is different, and, and, it, and it's all based on their their uh, uh, differences. And I think those there, there should be some enhanced penalties behind that. So now you hear it almost seems like a new top story every other day, just stories like this one almost, I would, I would imagine. But why do you think there are still problems in this country when it comes to acts of violence being committed based on race, allegedly? Well, well number one, we've lost the art of communicating. Uh, there are extremist groups in this nation that have stoked fear and hatred, and, and we have lost the art of being able to uh, disagree uh, and not become disagreeable. We've lost the art of, of sitting down and getting a chance to know one another. And so what these extremist groups have done, they have further polarized us uh, in not wanting to have conversations with each other. I think that everything, a lot of things, a lot of the problems that we have could be be solved because we we need to get to get back to that, that art of kneecap to kneecap, uh, uh, having just clear communication with each other. So between the United States and Mississippi, how serious of a problem do you think the two have when it comes to a lack of harmony between people of different races, views, beliefs, et cetera? I think we've made some significant progress uh, here in this state, as well as this nation. We, we, we've seen some strides made in the uh, political arena. We've seen some strides made uh, in educational opportunities for uh, those in the black and brown communities. Uh, but there's still a lot of work to do. When you look at the wealth equity gap, when you look at uh, the poverty level uh, of those in those uh, uh, minority groups in comparison to those in the, in the majority group, you know, there's still some, some strides that we need to make there. Uh, but any progress is good progress. And so I think if we focus more so on the good that we have done and, and not so much of the negative, you know, we can't legislate uh, someone to love us. We cannot legislate a person's uh, views, but we can uh, enhance those penalties when they commit these crimes against those persons. Uh, we can make sure that they pay for their crime. So 58 years ago, Civil Rights Act passed. Now, in your opinion, how much improvement in race relations do you think the country and our state have seen since that happened? I, I think we've, we, especially in the state of Mississippi, I think we have we have made some significant strides. As as I just mentioned, some of those, some of those areas that that we just covered, uh, we've made some significant progress, uh, but we still have work to do. When you look at uh, hospitals in uh, more of the rural and poverty uh, in poverty areas, uh, especially here in the Delta, uh, you, there there's a remedy to that because they they affect. Uh, those who cannot uh, afford uh, to be able to have, you know, medical services, uh, we can do that as a state. There's some things that we can do now that we should we we should be able to look. We should be able to uh, 
uh, uh, serve those uh, in those areas uh, of need. So we still have some work to do, but we have made some significant progress. Okay, so one more question. Uh, when, when it comes to like expanding the hate crimes law in Mississippi, do you, of course that will likely involve increasing penalties. Now, do you think that this could improve tolerance between different types of view or will it different types of views between people or will it just simply increase the penalties? Well, I think uh, going back to my earlier uh, answer, the mm -hmm. communication is key. Uh, these laws will not legislate love. They, they will not legislate tolerance. Uh, but we can punish those who choose not to uh, uh, or decide to harm, if you will, uh, those with different viewpoints. And I think that the laws should curtail uh, some of these issues that we're seeing across this nation, hopefully here in, in the state of Mississippi. We're talking this morning with State Representative Otis Anthony of Indianola. Thank you so much for your time this morning, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me.